Happy day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Better Catholics. Today, we have a special guest. We have Vinny Orsini. <laughs> A uh, big round of applause to Vinny oh, Orsini. Uh, he's one of the most uh, active people here in the diocese. Oh. I would say very active, especially in, in the youth ministry. But in other aspects too, uh, you're very involved in the life of the parishes. <laughs> Thanks. As a as a por uh, porter, <laughs> you open the doors to everybody. You know, it's a it's literally a and figuratively. It is a beautiful ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, and and this is a sub vocation that we can call. Let's talk about today. Let's talk about the the sub vocations that we technically call a uh, career or or occupational uh, occupational vocation. Uh, sometimes people see this, you know, and people or people say this, that um, uh, I have my vocation is to become a doctor, you know. So we wow. call this really uh, a vocation, a calling, you know. But before we go there, I would like uh, you, Vinny, to please say something about yourself. You know, so sure. people will know more about you. I'm sure they already know. But Hi, my name is Vinny Orsini. I've been... Um, uh, really interested in my Catholic faith growing up, my life, um, vocations, I think to me were something I thought about in college. Mm -hmm. And in after high school, you have the pressure of deciding what you're going to be when you grow up and you have to choose a major. And so I think people see vocations as like what you decide to do with your career. And um, in my life, I've been a waiter at a restaurant. I've mm -hmm. been a janitor. I've been uh, an educator and uh, now I'm a program manager. Mm -hmm. And I find that um, in any career that somebody chooses, mm -hmm. there's always a way to serve God through it mm -hmm. and to find the, the beauty in what you do. So um, doing that day by day uh -huh. and um, so far, so good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. But right now, what, what are you uh, doing or you have a... Oh, I'm a, a, I'm a social studies program manager oh, okay. now with the PSS. So I help find um, resources for the classrooms, for, for teachers. And I feel like this is something that's been building up uh -huh. in my previous years. And I think that's kind of what God does is he, you don't know what you're, he's going to call you to, but he'll give you the preparation for it, you know, and slowly build the skills, right? Uh, needed to, uh, yeah. to move yeah. on. So it's hard. I just started. Uh, a couple of months ago, but uh, by the grace of God, you know, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, we just keep on going. You yeah. know? <laughs> the moment we stop, then we become, you know, in a Tyler. <laughs> I don't know. So I recall, um, Vini, before you were a classroom teacher, so you had oh, direct yes. uh, contact with students. So that was in itself a vocation. So now, if I am correct, as a program manager, both of you uh, works in the same uh, institution. So that means, you know, in Chamorro, you say you're the magas, you're the boss. So you don't have direct contact <laughs> oh, wow. with the uh, yeah. students anymore. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. I just want to say that teaching in the classroom, I think, is just a great vocation, you know, mm -hmm. and I and I applaud everyone who, who does it. Um, being in a, in a managerial position, it might seem like a magas, but in, in another aspect, it's also, um, it's more of a sacrificial work because we do things behind the scenes. You know, we choose things for students that, um, maybe to their benefit and they'll never know our names. They'll never know that we helped their teachers out. But um, as long as the impact is there and, and, you know, the service is provided, we're very, we're very happy with what we do. No? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Definitely. I mean, we're, we are behind the scenes and sometimes we get the most criticism because we're not at the ground level actually doing the direct services with the children. Mm -hmm. However, we go through all the red tape and the bureaucracy and all the ins, ins and outs of getting those services to the kids and to the teachers so that our kids can learn. So. Yeah, It really is like we all have the same mission, but just different responsibilities for each one. Wow, yes. Right? And, and, and in, in the field of education, the end product is really to help the students grow intellectually, you know, morally, uh, spiritually, and the entire uh, being, the entire person. But being a program manager and also in charge of uh, other fields of or areas of education, you do more on the admin level. But yes. in the end, it goes directly to who are the beneficiaries Same of the program. Yes. yes. That's a good way to see it, Bishop. 
Yeah. Oh, for everybody's um, uh, information, I know, Bishop, that you, you, you yourself also used to teach. Yes. In so fact, you, was a, you were a career uh, person before you entered the seminary? Yes, yes. I, I, I share this a lot that uh, even before coming here to the Commonwealth, I already taught uh, two for two years uh, at a high school, Catholic mm -hmm. high school in the Philippines. Oh, wow. And uh, that's how I got to the Northern Marianas uh, through a job offer. So I really came here as, as a migrant worker. You know, don't wow. ask me how much was the salary because <laughs> <No>. <laughs> private school offer less compared to PSS. But again, when you talk about vocation, while the practical needs of salary and all of that is important because in reality you need to survive and take care of yourself. But I think when you consciously put in mind that this is more than just a job, it's a vocation, you give the best you can, no matter what the remuneration is. So I yes. taught in Rhoda for two years at the only Catholic school in Rhoda is Kuala in San Francisco de Bor. Yeah. Wow. So there's something, there's a common denominator in all of us here. Yes. <laughs> because I also taught. Ah. For five years, I was a teacher for five years, and I really loved it. I enjoyed it. It was one of those uh, experiences that I would say uh, I wouldn't trade it for, you know, for uh, a job somewhere else, you know. But of course, priesthood had to to be pursued, and it's a it's a it's a calling that I I really felt from the very beginning. But it is it was a very rewarding experience for me i was very happy and fulfilled you know, being with uh young people teaching them you know um so i think the happiness level i think it's something that we can uh talk about i always hear from people i'm not happy anymore mm -hmm. you know i'm not happy with what i'm doing i'm a doctor for uh, five years or i'm a dentist for i've been a dentist for 10 years i'm i'm not happy with i'm with what I am doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so if wow. I am to ask you, uh, Vinny, uh, as a career person, are you happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> is my supervisor what you watching are doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, Vinny, <laughs> no, you can ask Father Melvin if he's happy as a priest. Oh, good. Uh, you know, your supervisor's here. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know Vinny's supervisor. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I asked the wrong question. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do I do try to find happiness in, in, in new things. Mm -hmm. Of course, as a as a classroom teacher, the happiest thing was being around the students. Mm -hmm. You know, their joy is just so um, contagious. And um, I've I found that in in the, I, I, right now I work in a cubicle. So my classroom was 30 feet by 30 mm -hmm. feet. And now my cubicle is the size of a coffin. Right. <laughs> so um, the way I the way I find about it is, um, you know, my my role is not limited to this cubicle you know it's it's um it's expanded to help all the students in the the cinema i um when i was a classroom teacher one of my closest friends was the, the custodial staff and this one uh lady she was a custodian for over 50 years and oh, her wow. yeah her grandchildren are already you know um master's degree graduates but she still wants to be a custodian so i asked her why why do you want to do this and she said you know, I find that even though I was never given the education to become a teacher myself, if I clean the restrooms, if I make the cafeteria nice, kids will stay in school. And that's her service in oh. keeping kids uh, um, learning. So I find that whatever occupation that we may be in, there is a there is a service, there's an impact there and there's a dignity to the job. Although right. I felt father, to be honest, when I was uh graduating from college, I mean, high school, I was really thinking about what can I do that'll earn the most money? You know, what are my talents <laughs> yes, and yes. how can I exploit them? You know, and I, and I realized that um, it wasn't, uh, for example, I majored in public administration. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I loved government policy and things like that. But when I finally went into the, uh, the internship, I was put again behind a cubicle. And at that time, I was like 19 years old. I was not ready to be sitting down in a chair. Uh, and I was, I was, like you said, miserable. I mean, I knew the impact, but I just didn't feel that daily, that daily dose of joy. So I told my mom I wanted to stay a couple more years in the university and figure out what I want to do. And she said, no, 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 you want to be a teacher? Just do it now. <laughs> so, you know, because uh, I was going to graduate. So since then, I, I never, I never looked back and I'm still in education. Um, you know, almost 10 years later. So 
I don't know if this is uh, the the calling or if this is just part of the journey, but I mm-hmm. I find that it's um, it's an enjoyable one. Yes, yes. Yeah, and when we talk about vocation, it's really um, interesting. You brought up happiness, mm-hmm. and because if it is your calling, it gets you up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though you've had a rough day or a rough evening, when you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, you, you're ready to take on the next day because you enjoy what you're doing. And I right. think that's probably what God wants us to do. Enjoy what we're doing. Enjoy our vocation. It may not be the first one we thought it was. And then we move on to the next one. I hope this is your calling now because it sounds like you've reverted to a cubicle. (laughs) And I don't know, you weren't happy in a cubicle (laughs) the first time, but that's okay. That's how we explore. And that's why we're given that opportunity. I think uh, Christ guides us and it's up to us to choose the path. And it really is about being happy and enjoying what you're doing, because if you don't enjoy it, people... Uh, feed off your vibe Mm -hmm. and really it it really does no it does no um, benefit to anybody if you yourself are not happy in your vocation or in your career yes you know there's this uh, practical theologian his name is dr patrick reyes who talk about vocation and 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 if i recall correctly what he wrote he said vocation in the first place is really vocation to life he started with a general maxim that it's anything that enhances and gives life. And then he then recalled growing up how he was really blessed to have grandparents who like, you know, g- gave him unconditional love, encouraged him to be the best version of himself. And then he then asked the question like, it's important for us to realize where our feet no, uh, are grounded. What can he use the word soil? In fact, he developed wow. theology of soil. Mm-hmm. It's important for us to know what kind of soil are we like, you know, uh, or do we position ourselves? Do we stand on that particular ground? And so if you know that, you know how you are grounded in your vocation. And, you know, he grew up as, as a Latino and, and uh, you know, in, in, in a, a difficult area. And he even said, you know, the ground, the soil where he grew up did not really nurture like further education. You know, you you would be expected to be like a farmer and and do uh, work in the field, do manual labor. But then he said, but he did his best to discern on what would that work or occupation or job that would give him more life. Right. Wow. And I like that because it's really open to possibilities. Right. And it's also important for us to know that when we choose a vocation, we really need to know where we are grounded. Right. Right. And so, for example, for us here in the Northern Mariana Islands, it's important to ask ourselves and our young people and young adults, like, where are you grounded? Right. And in that way, you can discern that, like, you know, I'm grounded with family values. Mm-hmm. No, I'm ga- grounded with service. So you don't really aspire for something like, you know, to get your $1 million after six months of uh, employment at Venice Company, something like that. (laughs) What makes you happy? Right. You know, what what makes, what gives meaning to what you do? Yeah, it's true. Because if you're not uh, grounded or your, your happiness is not based on where you are grounded, it's, you'll never be happy, really. Yeah, you'll never be happy. Could I share something um, about the ground? Just sure. since we're talking about it. Um, I, I attended this conference recently and this uh, doctor who helped therapists from the 9-11 victims, mm-hmm. he was saying that when you, if you were to stick your hand in the ground, you know, the reason why gardeners are so happy people is because when, you're, when your skin gets in contact with soil, there are these nutrients in the soil that get absorbed by your skin mm-hmm. and they go straight to your brain and releases like dopamine, which causes you to feel happy Mm -hmm. so i know we always try to avoid being dirty but really (laughs) it's being grounded that causes us to feel more alive more happy yes and and also it's very refreshing like that image of ground soil because we came from dust and when we when we die we return to dust to that ground Mm -hmm. to the soil so it's for me it's a powerful image of Mm -hmm. our beginning you know where we're heading 
how do we respond to God's call of being productive and be happy with your with your choice? Because in the end, it is something that we choose out of freedom. No yes. one is forcing us to the ordained ministry. Yeah, no one is. So uh, uh, maybe you were forced because you, you know, you your mom told you My to. Mom uh, yes, is a strong character. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to argue her. <laughs> but you know, um, Bishop, when um when I later on when I graduated and and I had um, I had a group of friends come together. You know, we it's it's uh it's tempting to compare your lives to each other, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that everyone is uh is anxious about. And you know, my friends had such successful careers in the government and in business. And I was telling them like, oh, I'm I'm a teacher. You know, and they were just like, okay, cool. And I, and I, and I, I kind of felt, um, kind of hurt, right? At initially, but then I, and then I thought like, you know, who, who am I trying to impress with my job? You know, who, who am I doing this for? Is it for my pocket? Cause I make enough money, you know, whatever job that I'm, I'm given, but is it for God? You know, is, is a, if my intention is to serve the Lord and to serve the community, then I feel proud of saying I, I am an educator, you know? And if um, if my intention is to impress my my friends, then I'm going about the vocation process the wrong way. You know. Yeah, that's true. Because even in the priesthood, when you talk about you know vocation, different uh, career uh, for lay people, but even for us, like you know, some religious congregations. I mean, I know the Society of Jesus. They have priests whose main job is at the winery. How does that sound, wow. Donna? <laughs> <laughs> I should consider. Yeah. Wow. And there are also uh, Jesuits who, like you know, are good bakers. So mm -hmm. what they do is that's uh, that's that's the area, the the field that you know that the person is engaged with. I shared this a couple of years ago when I visited the diocese mm -hmm. in the Philippines because we have relationship with their bishop there, and they mm -hmm. are sending priests here. So when the bishop gave me a tour of the seminary, and when we visited the seminary, we passed by this fish pond. It's 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 like a huge um, fish uh, pond that actually uh, uh, they get an income out of that. And and he told me, he says, you know, it's just like that. But you know, we earn like X amount of money for that. And the person in charge of that fish pond is Father X. I wouldn't say the name oh, because it's a year. <laughs> and then in the beginning, the judgmental Ryan would say, wow, you studied in the seminary for X number of years and only mm -hmm. to be assigned as director of the fish fund or the manager. But as the bishop later on explained, he says, you know, this priest is very happy with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He is not the kind who would be like Father Melvin in the seminary teaching about Christology <laughs> and, and the scripture. Oh, wow. <laughs> because we come with different <laughs> gifts. And this priest, he was humble enough to admit what he's capable of. And given that role, he finds meaning in what he's doing. And so he's happy. So it doesn't wow. matter whether you're you're a program manager, you're you're you're, you're a priest, mm -hmm. or you know, you are in charge of a fish pond. I think any job is a job with worth and dignity. If we do it with love, right? Sad. Are you going to ask me if I'm happy, Vinny? No. Yeah. <laughs> I can see you're happy, Bishop. You know? <laughs> you're running yeah. marathons all over the world. That's <laughs> impressive. And, and you are a bishop, but that's, that's, but it's not lim you're not limited to it. And that's what I, I like about your, your statement is that mm. I think society likes to define us. Oh, you are a program manager. So you wouldn't know anything about mm. um, fishing or gardening. And you're, yeah. you're a bishop. You wouldn't know how to run, but you can because God gives us all these abilities and skills yes, and skills, talents yes. and, and we develop them and grow with them. So um, who, are, who are we to be defined by a contract? You know, yes. we're made in the image and likeness of God. I'd be glad to hear from Donna if she's happy with what she's doing, yes. her chosen vocation. I'm very happy with what I'm doing. Um, like I said, um, and like Vinny said, some, some friends, some people we know, they're in search of that recognition. They feed off acknowledgement, right? Um, and then there's others of us that just do what we love. And maybe the, the, the best thank you we get is that child 10 years later. Mr. Rossini, I remember you. Thank you. Oh, yes. how, how much better can that get? Or a parent, thank you for taking care of my, my kid while he or she's at school. These are the little things that get us going. It's not necessarily money. Yes, maybe that's what drove us at first. But then 
when you when you have the opportunity to reflect and just uh, understand your purpose and what you're actually doing and how you're impacting individual lives, uh, it's a whole different story. So I I agree with Vinny. I mean, the role we have now, maybe it's not the most popular role because it's not in a high you know profile type industry or we're not as recognized as as we should, especially for those who teach, those who clean the, the, the rooms for the kids so they're in a safe, healthy environment, those that open the doors for the kids. These are all contributing factors. These are all vocations, I think, mm -hmm. for a greater purpose, and that's to, to help our kids and keep them healthy so that they're able to learn and thrive in our community. And it also it goes... Uh, it goes uh, unrecognized many a times, but like I said, just those simple, those simple thank yous or those gestures we get, that's, that speaks volumes and that's more than any dollar a figure wow. can, can give, you know, can compensate. Yeah. I'm thinking also like Father Melvin and I, we <laughs> are in the parish, in parishes, and we do have people like the youth, the young adults who come into the different programs that we have. I wonder how we can accompany, you know, the, like Pope Francis' favorite word and nurture vocation to life in general. Right. And of course, our bias that we spoke in one of our mm -hmm. uh, um, discussions here is vocation to the priesthood. But maybe our goal is first to have that general encouragement for the youth and the young to really yes. embrace vocation in general. Right. I wonder if I'm, if I'm Father Melvin, we can provide that to people who, who come to us and, 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 and the youth and young adults entrusted to our care. Like we don't say, okay, you're an altar server, you're good to become a Pali. Mm -hmm. yes. But kind yes. of present first the bigger picture and then later on, you know, through the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, have them choose out of freedom where they find meaning, where they find happiness. Right, right. Well, it's a tough, <laughs> wow, it's a yeah. tough question. <laughs> you know, it's it's really no. There's really no program for that. I don't yeah. know uh, if the diocese has something, uh, you know, planned for that, like a career uh, program, uh, vocation, well, career vocation. Uh, well, you know, I want to say that or? as a as a catechist, right? That you know, these these are things that are talked about in in the in the catechist classes. Mm -hmm. You know, in the uh, formation classes. Even the nuns at Maturana, they they talk about um, vocations and, and 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 service to God. You know, I think something that we're all forgetting, and especially in the Catholic Church, is that we are all one body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we're not the head. You know, like you know, Bishop, you'd be like the head, right? No, Christ is the head. Oh, Christ is the head. I'm already yes. at Tintago. <laughs> oh, you're the Tintago. Yes, he's the shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm in the dogen of the Catholic Church, <laughs> that's fine as long as I'm part of this body yes. that's yeah. that's yes. alive, yeah. as you said. You know, and then yeah, but it's very difficult to do that also to create a program for the young people because we all know that parents they have the say sometimes to our young people. The children, you know, uh, whatever the mother or the father has, you know, planned for the child, you become a doctor. I want you to become a doctor. Um, so we can only, uh, maybe we could, should advise the parents instead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or we should give true. talks to, yeah. to the parents. Because they have to acknowledge that each child has his own skills, yes. has his uh -huh. own talents, you know, and, and, you know, if, if you are watching TED, I'm not sure if uh, yeah, TED if, Talk, TED Talk, yes, yeah. TED Talk. And they always say, you know, you, you have to recognize or acknowledge the talents of the child, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then um, uh, lead them towards that. That's that is, you know, searching for the right soil, really. Yes. So if you want to be grounded, uh, if we want to ground our uh, happiness, really, then we have to find the right soil. And right soil means find your talent, you know, find your skills, your strength. Um, and that's where you build up on. Yes. That's where you should try to grow on. Uh, it's not like I, I'm, I'm very, uh, art, I am a very artistic person, but I want to become a doctor. And my parents want me to become a, want me to become a doctor. So it, it doesn't really match the seed and the soil, yes. you know, they, they don't really match. Yes. So we have to find our proper, the proper soil that we should really plant ourselves into. And 
that's where you become happy, hopefully. Someday. Yes, yes. And in addition to that soil imagery, you know how sometimes we do career move, right? Oh, yes. And uh, uh, after X number of years, you feel that I for growth, I need to explore other possibilities. And talking about the soil, it's also important. I'm not really a gardener, but I learned that after planting like one kind of crop for so many years, mm -hmm. you have to let it like just be right. hollow. Don't mm -hmm. touch. Let the nutrients like come back again right. and live for a year. And I think in life, it's important to have that sabbatical. Let mm -hmm. the soil where you're grounded kind of just sit there and not do anything and and be open to where God would lead you so that you yes. can plant the kind of seed that God wants you to be engaged with again. So I think it's important because this is not a race, right? Yeah. Say, for example, Vinny, after 10 years, you would say, you know what? I've been just not entertaining this idea of the priesthood. You can still sign up. But you, you have to that. make that <laughs> that soil no like pressure. hollow <laughs> and, and, and not being tilled for a while, you know, take that sabbatical, let, 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 let that like empty space kind of, you know, uh, lead you to really uh, find where the next direction of your mm -hmm. life will be, right? And uh, I don't know if that makes sense, Donna. I don't know. I I I didn't drink wine this morning, but I, I talk a lot. <laughs> I think Donna is a great person to to talk to about you know vocations. I know she's worked with um uh, children with special needs for so many mm -hmm. years, and talk about you know getting unrecognized, right? You know there yes. are people who are going to be helped and will never maybe not even recognize your name or they have a disability, but. Um, I feel like society in general tends to cast aside people like, oh, if you have a disability, then you're not much mm. good for me or for for mm. the community. So um, get out of it. But people like her, they, um, you know, they provide dignity to these people. You know, they say, hey, this person yeah. can develop these skills. And, and, and now we're even looking at putting them into jobs and mm. things like that. And it's amazing, you know, just how how, how productive and how useful things can be if we look yes. at other people through the eyes of God instead of us. Yeah. It's always great when you're able to focus on what a person can do, not necessarily what they cannot do, mm -hmm. right? What are their abilities? And that's for anybody in general, right? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, like, my dad. When we talk about vocation and careers and all this, uh, one time my mom's like, oh, you should have been a doctor. You have long fingers. You can perform surgery and all this stuff, right? Oh, you could blah, blah, blah. My dad, he's like, I just want my kids to be happy. Uh, That's it. And I think that is the premise to a successful vocation. Mm -hmm. What are you happy doing? Yes. Sometimes it takes one, two, maybe even three tries to figure out what is your calling, right? Yeah. What What is it you're supposed to do? Yes. But I'll say it again. If it gets you up in the morning and you're re-energized and you let, you know, the the trials of yesterday go, I'm not saying just to forget about it, learn from it and find ways to move on and try to make it better. Because um, it's not necessarily, I would say, we're uh, Im implementing God's service in our particular industry. We can't, right? But we can be Christ-like in what we're doing. And I think that goes back to a, voc a successful vocation. Really, we need to find, like you said, Bishop, what grounds us, even in the soil. Soil's not always firm, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's loose, or when it gets wet, we, we, our feet sink in a little bit, maybe our hands as well. But what gives us that stimulation to, to, to get back up and mm -hmm. to clean our hands and clean our feet and say, okay, this is where I belong. I'm going to make this work here because this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. That's how I wow, feel. That's good, good, good. I don't great. Know. It's very eloquently said. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Vinny, uh, if you are to give advice to our, especially to the young listeners and to the parents, uh, those who are struggling to find their purpose, trying to find their a uh, place in this circle of life, you know, oh, yes. what would be your, your advice to them? You know, I would say that <clears throat> there's no, if, if it's not in sin, 
there's no wrong way to serve Christ. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're not sinning, there is there is beauty and there is glory to God through it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was Saint Therese of uh, of Lisieux who was sweeping her convent, mm -hmm. and you know she felt like she wasn't being put to her. The the other nuns thought that she wasn't being put to her ability, but she said that. Um, you know, this is the way I serve God by cleaning up the Abbey. This is how I do it. And it's her little way, you know, it's not, right. not the major ways of changing the world and making a huge impact, but the little ripples that we, we can make in our day-to-day -day life. Even if you do not have a job, even mm -hmm. if you're just a student, right. you know, you can make a ripple among your friends and your family. And sometimes the ripple is as simple as a smile. Mm -hmm. I know we don't f smile as much with our face masks on, but um, it's it, <laughs> yeah. it's very contagious and so wonderful for the for the body. Yes. Well. So wow. It's a it's a good really a very good dialogue, very good conversation. We're hoping though that um, we are able to inspire our uh, listeners, mm -hmm. our viewers, uh, to find your little ways. You know, your little mm -hmm. uh, contribution. Your uh, find your purpose in in life, your happiness. Find your soil and and ground yourself into that, uh, so that you, uh, as you find your career, um, you may also find happiness uh, in life. Um, and this is one way of uh, to become really better Catholic.